All right, well, uh, Friday, and today is a day for the forming of the footer, or footing. Uh, sorry. Um, I'm on my way over there. It's 9.30 or a little after. I was told yesterday that they'd be there at 10.30, and that Sean was going to get me some oversized stones, unwashed, to throw down on that front yard and try and turn it into something that a heavy truck can operate out of and people can walk around in without tracking a bunch of mud up and down and everything. So, and I said to him, I'll spread that out if you just wanted to get it here. He's got a contract elsewhere and he's trying to get his machinery up and off my site and it wasn't part of his project to spread that out. So I'm just been trying to save him. It wasn't part of his project to pull the dump truck out of the yard uh, on the other site where we were dumping. So we're just trying to limit that type of thing because I understand how that feels when you um, quote out prices for things or I just estimate but still when stuff gets pumped up because of added scope that was unforeseen anyway I'll spread the stone out if he hasn't done it and uh, we'll be happy to do that and then I'll just catch up with him on the cost of it when we pay his final invoice and stuff so that's cool um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to try and set up a time lapse and uh, I don't think there's anything to say on the site, unless maybe there is, but after that, I'll do the time-lapse setup. Maybe try to move it in the middle or get a couple different angles, so of the forms going together and the concrete coming in. I don't know how long the phone will run for, so we'll see. These guys have just been here, been here a couple hours. Form walls, weep, weep connections between the inside and the outside, foundation drain, rebars tied in a lot of places. I got wire holding them in and key points beyond the pinning. And they'll overlap and that'll be in the footing itself, but they have had the line pulled through here uh, for straightness and to check where they are and they just end up splitting the difference between that on that overlap so to do a stretch They do pass but the straight line works out from the inside surface there to the inside surface here to be what we need to meet the drawing and The bump out is additional The one side that sticks out more is just a little bit extra concrete if that makes sense Otherwise, it's a whole project to try to fit those up to this application and they won't work again another time so that's the way in which you end up with just from the middle an additional inch and a half to nothing in terms of additional concrete volume in order to meet the minimum spec on the drawing that shows a perfectly smooth sided uh, concrete footing, right? So, <clears throat> oh, I'll go out and see the setup here. They're just working out of a box truck. This has made a lot of difference working with this place. Because again, my architect was on vacation, so I've been leaning on the people that do it all the time and have a lot of experience to fill in the gaps between what I'd like to see, what's possible, and then in the end when he came back, what he would sign off on. So that's all I really needed from him in a time crunch, which makes me that guy rushing things. But, <clears throat> and Sean got the oversized unwashed stone out so they could drive here this morning. See what this thing looks like when it's done. Rock and roll. Okay. 
There you go. Ready to land this plane. Well, that'll be when we set the house down, so we gotta have something else for this. Ready to put this plane's tires on. <laughs> Maybe we should put his wings on first. Anyway, concrete on the way. sawing up there and I'll just mention that he's not wearing any PPE but and I'm not even but I'm not standing lined up axially with that <clears throat> cutting wheel especially at this elevation where where it's at the ground up there it's rolling down and straight at my face and head just little things that you can do around a job site uh, nobody else is gonna care at all and you won't care if nothing happens but if something were to go flying over there I wouldn't be there to catch it with my face so so much the better we gotta get our inspection from the town. So I called that in. Apologize for being so last minute. I could have thought of it sooner, but they're sending someone over in time to see what we've done here before we pour concrete on it, see? Because then they will stand by it. If we did, for some reason, miss our inspection, sometimes they'll make you tear things out if you can't show them anything. But in a lot of cases, they'll make you take responsibility for it, either as me, the project manager, GC, or the homeowner, or whatever, and just sign off and say it is what it is. So if there's problems, that's that. And so you haven't got recourse or anything in the future. So you want to stay on top of your inspections. There's also going to be one when we're at this stage in the wall, ready to pour. They got to look and inspect that steel before we pour onto it. So keep an eye out. Pump trucks here, creek trucks here. I think we're going up and over to get to the back with that pump truck. So four or five guys here. Here's a serious piece of equipment. If you want to pump four inches of stone, liquid stone, up into the air and keep her moving. Well, watch this bitch go. It's going to be exciting. Hang on. Get his outriggers out. Eventually, the crete's going to come out. One in the truck. This one's coming this way. You would think he needs to put all four down under every circumstance, but if he's going over there with it and it's going to pull the truck down, he might only set those outriggers on that side so we'll just see what he does here set up and do I don't know part of me wants to get some time lapse part of me wants to just be able to run around and catch the action here or there careful drive around with your outriggers out have them folded off against something or wreck something else doing that but what are you gonna do you know when you're pro Obviously can't go up with the wire either, so just gonna have to be where it is. The amount of reach, the amount of reach you want in your little snorkel has to pack up only so big, and then the truck you need to cart it around ends up being a monster, and then it's kind of a pain on a tight site to get such a monster truck in there. But if you can, then you can do everything big and small.
This whole project relies completely on the power of hydraulic fluid. Otherwise, we're not picking that house up. We're not digging anything out. We're not getting the concrete where it's trying to be. We're not setting the house back down. And, you know, that's about the entire backbone of doing this. So, respect. <clears throat> Okay, figure out where he wants his dongle to dangle and he's gonna have it just where he wants it here. You notice it's hard line up the arms and it just turns out per uh, perpendicular to every pivot. <clears throat> it has some kind of, you know, collar connection that can pivot there, but it's not a flexible hose route this whole way here. <clears throat> cool little whatever you call those fellas that hold the thing route it along like steel over there but over here I don't know why it looks like aluminum I guess it's not it's just the paint and the light so back this back off and see what's cooking here it's getting a little longer of a donger buckle that in <coughs> Making your donger longer there, eh? Yeah. She go in, she come
normal. There it is. Some primer water looks like. So it drags the crete up through the tube from vacuum and then you get that expensive poopy. Make sure she can pay attention to what she needs to pay attention to also. So many fun and unique things happening on a day like today for some of us and for others. Nothing they haven't seen before every day of the week for years. So that's just something you want to manage. Asking too many questions and um, keeping people distracted when they could otherwise do a perfect job and make a mistake. So. <clears throat> One thing's for sure, it's not boring when you're pouring. It's a stiff batch too, so it wants to pile up. It's not running away from them. Piers are going in today too, as far as I know. Caught that one when we were over there. Okay. At least that one. Okay. Now I gotta have to fucking jump back over. Well, leave it to it. She and I were just talking about them as though they're gonna happen today, so I expect. So we were just talking about the piers. I was interested to know that they aren't gonna form them with two by 12. It will just pile up that stiff batch to the top of the rod is the indicator for their elevation. And uh, at about halfway up, they'll throw the <clears throat> bar in there and then keep pouring it up. Just wet pour it out and let it, let it to relax and sit there, we'll be fine. So showing it as a square and stuff in the drawing is one thing, but in real life it's something else. This guy's keeping her moving, and then the other guy is still backed up, sending his concrete in here. Did you ever think you'd be on the internet watching porn with me? We're all here online watching porn. Can't really get over there without <clears throat> taking a long trip off a short pier.
keep trying to avoid our gutters, but he's only being partially successful. That's us up there. This guy is from Haley. So he'll watch that this is all going on, right? why concrete costs so much. It's not cheap itself, but putting it where you're trying to put it, using stuff that costs the better part of a million dollars, it has to happen in an ultra-timely fashion. Uh, well, at this point, <clears throat> these verts have yet to be pushed down in there. They'll go in just about like anchor bolts going to the top of the wall. <clears throat> and so they'll be sticking up when you cast up your wall onto it and uh, anchor your wall to your footing. Got a sleeve here <clears throat> for our sewer to go out when we rebuild it. There's the old sewer breather that was right in the outside corner of the old foundation. Uh, that's wild. So I absolutely, you know what it is? Because the wall had fallen in here so far that where we were working on this felt like the inside surface of the old foundation wall. But in reality, it should have been way the hell over there, which is why this is throwing me off. So we're where we want to be, obviously. <clears throat> we lift it straight up, we'll come straight down. And then these lines here will always be going through from one side to the other, called weeps. And then we'll go around the inside <clears throat> with our corrugated pipe. And both ends of that will go into the sump crock. And its elevation will be set so that it's essentially flush with the floor pour, which would be about four inches above this surface of this footer. And on the outside, it'll go all the way around and just go one end into the other like human centipede or whatever. Uh, like the Mobius strip. So anyway, the whole entirety of it is per uh, permeable, perf perforated and therefore will be waterproofed outside and anything that comes down here can't get in, can't get in, can't get in, can't get in, goes into that and the level in that equalizes and runs along and yes it does run inside and seeks its own level and if it comes along and it falls off in the crock and so much of it falls off in the crock that it rises to kick on the pump then the pump will fire up and come up and go out through the wall and puke it outside on the ground again and thereby you're actively managing the fact that the water level never rises into your basement as long as the rate at which it's building up or coming in is not exceeding the rate at which you can pump it out with the sump pump that you have basically tying in the last little bit here find your way back would be a problem if i stole some vapor some of that water i would like to ask i'm sure it won't be let me uh i'll get to the bottom of that for you real quick for washing up when you're done yeah okay wait you'll do it over here somewhere i assume right here, yeah yeah, let me make sure that's all right. I'll make a call. It'll be on me. All right, well, we got verts here. They got to get stuffed into that stem wall footer. They're just running wheelbarrows to the piers, making sure those measure out and they're at the right elevation, basically. OSHA says you got to have those so that somebody doesn't fall and get stabbed to death. Easy enough to do. Other truck's gone. We're on truck number two. Or we're done. Unless we're just clearing everything out, must be. <clears throat> Figures he's got enough in there to do what he's trying to do. And we got the water set up over there. Do some rinsing. A couple brand new buggies. I'm gonna check one of these out for myself. Heavy fat tire on the front. Heavy duty HDPE or whatever. I'll have to ask them where they got those bad boys. I'll kick that on when you're ready because it leaks like a sieve. I already got it. It's okay, cold. fine. As soon as it gets Oh, you were filling the pail. Okay, for sure. I'll do that for you. It just makes it uh, 
with the wires and stuff in the way it makes it easier. I just suck that water right there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he'll suck that up and clear it out. Which is radical. Just needs whatever. 40 gallons of water. It's topped off. I'll shut it down. Bucky. Getting those piers right. These guys have been great. I don't know. You never know if you're going to get steamrolled or everything will be cool as long as you did your best to get ready for them. So that's what my plan was. Hopefully they're halfway pleased. This here is kind of a cream puff, I think. Small, easy, nice day. So let's keep it that way. All right, well, we got a dumper out here still, I think. That's that. Looking real nice. Keeping it 100. You get everything just so. Your forms are set level. Your pin tops are level. All at the elevation that you want. Everything's been decided. You can pack that stuff up. And then when it's concrete time, you just move right along and have plenty of people. Um, although here, interestingly, that is not at the top of the wood. Huh. So maybe that one was designed to be <clears throat> low. You know what? It doesn't have to be as thick. So it's interesting. I'll have to ask because this appears to be more wood showing than down there. So if the wood wasn't level, then how do we make sure that the concrete is? But um, I'm sure that they know what they're doing. But it is interesting to see that. Everywhere else it can be screeded essentially floating the screed on the <clears throat> wood itself and knocking it down to that plane. And over here we just ran over enough to be there and the form must go around that outside corner and when you pour the wall it all just fills in and becomes one homogenous thing there which is just what you want. Now I'm waiting for Stone Slinger. Um, I could actually call back and tell them it could be sooner. Um, I mean she wanted it to cure up. It wasn't as though um, it could be done right away and he's good he won't splatter stone all over everything and won't get stuck to it and stuff she's saying so but he's going to blow that all in here and we'll get some footage of that and then I'll wrap this video up today okay here's the stone slinger she's just a big old conveyor belt and I grew up with the benefit of my dad and his siblings doing hand labor on the farm, making hay the way people still picture it doing, happening now, throwing kicker bales into a wagon and coming home and running them up in a hay mow on the elevator, loading it by hand and, you know, but when I was born and raised, by the time I was doing that, we had a lot of machinery that kept it easier, far easier, easier on your body. And obviously some of the people I'm working with on this one remember how it used to happen. <clears throat> but again, I'm benefiting from the 21st century, basically. Between the 
pump truck and the stone sling. This is a piece of machinery I've never been around before, so I don't know how likely it is that I'll get hit with an errant number two stone in the eyeball and be blind for the rest of my life. It looks like I'm all right here. Pretty freaking sweet though, man. I get some stills of this. till Monday because the town wants to have a look at the form. Probably strip the form midweek next week. And then you're gonna do the stone work? I'll spread it around, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe... Sling, slang, slung. And from what I understand, they'll just brush the top of that off tomorrow. I'll knock some of the high points down so they can get to what they're doing. They're not walking around, huffing and puffing over the big old piles of shit. And then they got another truck coming. Well, I'll just have them dump it, and then I can run it around in the wheelbarrow with the skid steer. Okay, so for this one, we're just going to back in and make a pile. And I just can try and see him in his side mirror while I stumble and fall over this pile. And come back this way. And we're just going to make a big pile of it here. So this will go on the outside of the foundation wall. <clears throat> Gotta let a car go by. This will be once the wall's cast up and I'll dump this in around the outside. Okay, they came, they slung, they left. I've already seen that, so he just did the same thing here for me in a pile. <clears throat> so this will allow them to work in there tomorrow to form. And I'll just leave it like there, dust this off, but I won't do it now. She said it'll screw up the concrete, so we'll leave it right there. And uh, <clears throat> they can do all of their work, even though it'll probably blow Sean's mind and leave me to then route my outside uh, tile line around and just serve that to myself with my skid steer, trickle it, you know, spill it down in there on top and get that all the way I want. And then finally I'll go inside and uh, just pull it away from, and they'll probably do a little help 
they'll help me a little when they're getting their forms out of there kind of pull it away a little bit some and then I'll just make some more room for myself and get my towel around the out or the inside edge of the footer and then throw my stone back on it and do, get my stone you know raked around and stuff worst case scenario I don't think I'm gonna have too much stone in there because it looks real full except all the land the footprints of these cribbing of this cribbing is light and uh, I'm basically just gonna fill level with the footer so if anything I can pitch a little bit through one of the window holes that'll be here real close to the ground I can just make a little shoot and uh, or something like that so I think we're in good shape here I don't work in a hot rush because I don't have endless uh, queue of projects to do and I just want to make sure when I'm doing something for the first time basically that I'm doing it right so that's enough said hopefully over here it might be kind of a pain I'll just use the wheelbarrow probably or if I get a dingo or an MTA 85 for some stuff which I might get and hell I might come right in here over the footer when it's set up once the walls are here and, and the cribbing and stuff is out of here and just do the spreading and everything all with a little ride on or, or stand up kind of skid steer and uh, <clears throat> in that case I can get a little bit farther over there with it and uh, oh I have to fill that too so he can get in there and get his cribbing he doesn't want to walk up and over um, and into there and stumble and fumble and fall down so I got a short list of things I have to do before we set the house down but that's over a week away still so there'll be more videos between then and now but that is day i fucking forget guys i'm burnt out and shot and tomorrow's still a work day thanks for watching we'll see ya